Hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Jakub Scheiner, and I will be talking about uh, transitions. Um, I'm glad that uh, there's at least some of you after the party last night. Thanks for coming. I hope it's going to be worth it. Um, I am a visual designer. I'm part of the GNOME design team. So I uh, focus on making things pretty, not exactly uh, uh, talking in front of the audience. So I apologize. Uh, and I try to make it up um, to provide things to look at. Um, when, uh, when I talk about design to people, I like to use uh, this image, uh, the, um, because uh, sometimes when, when we're dealing just with the people that, uh, um, you know, are aligned with uh, sort of, you know, talking within your own bubble, talking with people that are, that have similar um, um, sense of direction, um, you're sometimes shocked to then talk to somebody that doesn't share that vision. So when I was working um, uh, in a uh, German company, it was very surprising to hear that people actually uh, thought that in spending time and money investing in something like uh, you know the, the door handles that are. Uh, uh, commonly used in the States as a waste of time, you know, th they, they thought that uh, um, it's not worth dealing with people that aren't open, uh, able to open a door. Uh, and then you, you, know, you saw people trying to exit uh, a mall, you know, that way, <laughs> that way, um, so that was kind of, um, amazing to me that, that, that people thought that uh, doing the extra bit of work to make it obvious how uh, the door operates was not worth the time. Um, I didn't want to use this slide, um, but here it is, because I had a discussion with, uh, with one of the younger designers, uh, like the, the night before, and we were talking about icon design, and they, they mentioned that, uh, that they felt uh, uh, that the, the visual style, the GNOME visual style is very retro, which reminded me of a similar struggle that I'm going to be, uh, you know, that, that, that I'm trying to address with this talk, trying to sell transitions as being something worth investing time and effort in because it is painful. I mean, you have to be somewhat, especially when you're one of the first ones that invest their time as developers in it. Uh, it's, you gotta, it's, it's a bit of a masochistic endeavor. Um, so you need a little bit of motivation to, uh, to do that. And uh, this reminded me of um, you know, uh, time not that, th not that long ago where uh, people didn't think that it's worth having an alpha channel for images that uh, allowed us to have, um, you know, uh, blended transparency. So like having nice, smooth drop shadows. Um, it was a hard proposition because we had an amazing format called XPM that uh, was great in that you could embed it in a, in a C header file because it was text-based. And so it was very hard to like, plug a binary format that you know, um, so just did this fancy transparency thing. Um, I actually looked and uh, we don't actually ship any XPMs on a fresh Fedora. It used to be like, oh, look at user share pixmaps and all the horrors will come up. 
And no, I didn't have any. I, I, I saw Peter's uh, computer and he actually had uh, Xterm installed, which of course uh, has an XPM icon. But uh, so uh, that's, that's why uh, I'm gonna be talking about transitions and why they're good. Um, and to start off, I'm gonna just poop over the status quo first um, to see how, why, why not using transitions is really bad. Um, so doing these binary state changes in the UI is not something that we actually observe in the real world. Um, everything happens, even the fastest movements, uh, changes that happen in the real world do not like happen immediately. It's like, um, it's, it's uh, like to, to um, imagine it in the real world, it would be like somebody punching you in the face every time you like enter the room. So you enter the room, somebody punches you in the face, you, you, you know, lose consciousness for a split second and then you try to figure out, okay, I'm in this room. Yeah, I'm in Guadalajara, okay, everything. So, so you have to like get your bearings and figure out what's happening and then, then, then you're back. Um, this is the equivalent of that situation uh, in the UI. So this is not a long ago, and this is like the ideal state where you only have one window um, in the workspace, so it's kind of easy, but it's still. You enter a room, and then something happens. Some guy comes over, Igor, punches you in the face, and then you're like, what happened? All right, yeah, I have a window, I had it there, now it's there. All right, I, I got it. But, I mean, it's, it's a simple example here, but you do have a cognitive burden. You have to, like, rescan the, the situation. You have to figure out. This was, this was easy, but I, I apologize for, <laughs> for using video recording, because, like, my JH built environment didn't record uh, <laughs> my screencast. So you can see this actually, uh, Hans Zimmer music in the background. <laughs> uh, so you see the same situation, and while you know it's pretty much the very same simple thing, you don't have to like this. There's the in-betweens. You absolutely see that it's that same window that's moving around. Um, I'm gonna use. Um, there's gonna be a talk by Matthias about a new application that we're now shipping, recipes. Great application um, that's not only being a great application that's useful, but also nice test bed of the, of the new patterns that we're coming up and all the you know, technologies like for the sandboxing, the, the portals and everything. But I'm gonna use it as a bad example. Uh, Matthias is gonna... Uh, have to, uh, I mean, I apologize to Matthias for, for doing that. So one of the, <laughs> one of the, one of the things that, uh, that we have that's new is a new way to like um, uh, fill in the ingredients list um, where you have number of uh, ingredients. And one of the many things that, that you wanna do is reorder how you wanna present the ingredients. And so we have this very uh, direct manipulation interface where you're just drag and dropping uh, items on a list. And uh, so far, it's like I can't imagine a, a better way to do things, but as soon as you, uh, I mean, you get indication of where you're dropping it, so everything is fine, until the moment where you drop it. The moment where you drop it is where Igor comes again and punches you in the face, because you have to then rescan the whole list and figure out, okay, yes, that's that's where I really dropped it, and that's where I wanted it. Um, with transitions, even though this is just an abstract uh, illustration where you don't really see uh, what the items are, you never lose track of the order. You never have to stop 
and rescan where the where the stuff is. Um, another example I have is, uh, which is kind of amazing that I'm going to Blender for good UI uh, examples, but it's it's Blender. It's the 3D application that I particularly use for all the all the mockups, um, and that's where. Uh, you're changing the views in the 3D viewport. Um, it used to just do, you know, be quick. Have the old style thinking where we're not gonna waste CPU cycles, I mean GPU cycles on, on transitioning. You know, we, we need all the power. We, we need to push millions of triangles. But then they realized that uh, it's actually useful to uh, maintain the, the spatial awareness when you're dealing with something that looks the same from like multiple sides and then you know switching from the camera view to the orthogonal view where you're actually manipulating the the mesh it it does transition and you don't lose uh you don't lose uh track of where you are i'm gonna skip this because um there's gonna be another talk by tobias afterwards um and i don't want to i want to steal his thunder so maybe if we have uh, questions we can we can get back to that so this is you you've seen it I mean Christian uh, spends a lot of effort into making this so I'm not that mad about him uh, stealing my thunder um, so this is the new uh, layout um, um, engine or um, um, uh, redesign in blender and one of the things that you can do there is like re remap reshuffle the way, rearrange the, the mostly text views on, on your workspace. And without transitions, it would be another great example of Igor coming in and punching you in the face, because all the documents pretty much look the same. And if you would just do the binary split, then you would have to stop and figure out, OK, yeah, that, that, that's the one. That's what happens. This kind of interface, I you know, would be kind of tricky uh, to suggest if it wasn't for the transitions. Similarly, another thing that we would not recommend in the past without knowing that you guys can do transitions now um, <laughs> would be to change things um, without uh, uh, the, the, the explicit user um, interaction. So like um, we used to have situations where I think it was evolution that would bring up a preference dialog and then as it was loading like more modules, whatever it's doing, the, it, the, the dialog would resize and, and it was horrible. So like resizing window under you when you're, when you're not actually explicitly resizing the window, that's absolutely horrible. But for cases like this where um, you have a result popover. Uh, with transitions, it's perfectly fine and desirable to have it change size depending on the number of results, rather than the old style where you would have a fixed size not to change its size, because that would be horrible without transitions, and then have a lot of white space most of the time, or provide a scroll bar if you had more, more results than you can fit. So transitions really make new interfaces possible. Um, transitions also can uh, grab your attention. This is um, another thing where we wanted to have a persistent um, uh, indicator of ongoing uh, transactions in, in files in Nautilus um, that's available, but um, it wasn't immediately obvious um, that uh, that uh, control is available. If we added that flash at the beginning, it kind of grabs, grabs the attention. Um, sorry about uh, the intro. I think there's like credits in the end. Um, there's some patterns that are, uh, you know, out of questions, out of question if we can't transition. Because again, it would be super difficult to figure out like what just happened. Um, if you don't have the 
the context of the, the whole path being one thing, it would just seem like you're going to a different path or stuff just disappearing. Um, so, you know, with transitions, we can actually maintain uh, the context of, of this whole being a, being a single thing. Um, there's ways where transitions can, like, hint to um, existence of or location of, of some things. So, for example, this is one of the prototypes that we did for, uh, for the boot up, for the launch setup of the system. So, for example, um, we found out that some people, like fresh new users, have an issue of um, booting up uh, GNOME and just having the blank state and um, you know having trouble figuring out where where to start so if for example you have a multi-state transition where you're booting up and you're showing the the app grid populating the view and then disappearing back where where uh, where they live you know you have a transition that essentially uh, you know um, acting as a, as a hint, um, which is better than something to dismiss every time. Of course, uh, we didn't end up going with that because um, one of the things that animation requires and requires a lot of effort is for it to be fluid, to be non, non uh, not skipping and, uh, you know, boot up it's very I.O. intensive, and it's actually quite tricky to do animations at this, that time. Um, so transition from the, you know, kind of engineer point of view is just, uh, you know, uh, iteration of a value of a property in time. Um, the, the reason why I have this slide is simply because it looks cool, but the, the property isn't actually uh, very interesting. It can be, you know, uh, things like uh, position scale, rotation, the, the opacity, alpha, all sorts of things. But what's more interesting to, to talk about is time, uh, which is kind of ironic because, like, if you saw any of my talks, uh, that's what I have trouble, trouble with. And, uh, <laughs> You know, I, I will be lecturing you on, on being very timely and, uh, and I can't really do it all at once. So time actually reveals or gives you the option to expose properties that are, that are otherwise not visible just on the 2D space. So for example, here, uh, just by making use of some tricks from the animation world, we can hint to objects having some mass uh, simply by, uh, you know, using different um, easing, uh, or it can be uh, like, okay. So you may think, well, this is just some abstract, uh, you know, visual design guy, mumbo jumbo. Uh, you don't really need it for for user interfaces. But imagine that you have like uh, a view of items like. A photo gallery, or a, or a, um, you know folder view, and you can, as you're populating the view, you can hint to uh, some albums having more items than than others, and this is just the, the easing. You can imagine like the um, um, like overlapping motion of like other thumbnails trailing as you're as you're populating the view. So you can actually hint to things having more items without, you know, having it explicitly all the time on a, on a screenshot. Um, you can also hint to uh, items um, having special relations just by, um, you know, animating them differently. So in here we have a grid view that's not like separated in any other way than as you're transitioning, the first row is treated 
differently. So you can actually hint to those being special. So like you have a great view of favorite items versus all the rest. Um, you can, uh, as you're populating view, you can hint at some items having uh, like special um, uh, states. So for example, we have the, the status icons and some of them actually have multiple uh, values associated with them. And as you're populating the view, you could be hinting to those being special with that transition. Um, now is the time where uh, I'm going to be talking about timing. Um, Christian, in his talk, hinted at um, um, you know, being um, aware of, of dimensions for, for displays. Um, I sort of have a very simplistic approach, and uh, I just think that transitions should be fast, uh, because while initially they're flashy and uh, they're great to look at, how many, how many of you are toggling the, uh, the app grid icon in the overview just to like release stress? Is that? Oh, it's just me. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. There's two two people. Okay. Good. I'm not that weird. <laughs> so yeah, it is. It is. It is fun thing to do, but over time, it like if 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 you're feeling like you're waiting for a transition, that's where we failed. I mean, the the purpose of it is not to be flashy. The purpose of it is to never lose track of the flow. Uh, so, like my rule of thumb is that, you know, if it's longer than 200, 250 milliseconds, um, then it's maybe too slow. Uh, and of course, it depends on like if you're populating a large view, you can, uh, or many items, you can go over that. But uh, you know, you might say, well, the faster you make it, and if the the graphics subsystem is not keeping up, then you know you're it's going to be more jaggy. If you're, if the animation takes longer, you can drop a few frames and it still feels all right. But that's just you know an excuse. Um, we have been kind of with with the GNOME shell six years ago. We've been kind of at the forefront. Now it's not something that that we're uh, spearheading. I mean, there's other systems that are very uh, advanced in terms of animation, and they're doing 60 frames, and now the, the new iPads are doing 120 frames a second. So, and the, 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 the visual, the human visual system is actually very, very uh, uh, sensitive to change. And if Zishan was here, is Zishan here? No. If Zishan was here, he would, uh, he would, uh, um, uh, accuse me of just putting this slide <laughs> for the sake of having drones in my presentation, which is completely uh, out, of, out of question. I'm just showing that even at a low frame rate image, you can, you can tell that there was a, you guys can tell that there was a drone like right there, right there. And that's like two frames that you see it. Uh, so we're uh, we're very sensitive to uh, to to change. It doesn't mean that you can actually uh, make a um, uh, corrective maneuver to avoid crashing, which is exactly what happened just a while afterwards. But since I've brought it up, yeah, we 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 were third in the Paris Drone Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> Despite, despite my effort to take the team down by <laughs> crashing into my teammate. <laughs> um, all right, so that's, that's like my very narrow, um, narrow view of uh, why transitions um, are useful. 
Um, there's going to be a talk later by Tobias uh, who's going to um, give you a, a more holistic view of what you can actually build based on, on, on using transitions. So I hope uh, you guys are going to stick around. And uh, I think I can uh, take some questions. Yes. Cheers. Um, yeah, so I think you're totally right. Like animation should be fast and I can give you an idea of like why I need to slow them down sometimes. Because I found like I, you can only move so many centimeters without breaking the persistence, which is where you, you see it as jumping, right? That doesn't mean we can't do other things. The thing I want to be able to do is if we could actually get real motion blur into the different layers, then we can just fake it and we can have significantly fewer frames Right, because if we're going to go every 16.7 milliseconds for a frame at 60 hertz, you know, and uh, in 200 milliseconds we can only get, you know, so many frames. Yeah, I mean, uh, I hope you can still hear me. Uh, I don't, my, like, I, you, you saw me uh, using motion blur uh, for, for those mockups uh, simply because I have to render all of these things and it's easier to render 30 frame animation and 60 frame animation, but just, I, I think pushing, pushing uh, the frame rate to me has the same value as using motion blur. And uh, the, re the, reason we, the reason it's hard to do that today is the resize machinery in GTK. It's not that it's slow, it's just that when you go through these transitions, you, have, you invalidate so much content especially if there's, say, like a text view in the area, and you have to re-render like a huge amount of text content and lay it out. So I mean, those, it, are, those are the problems that I'm running up motion into. Motion blur is great. I just, like, I have experience from gaming that motion blur is just as expensive as pushing the frame rate from the gaming world. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, like, okay, I, I take a word for it. Motion blur is uh, just as good of a tool. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, do you have any um, like guidelines written down for someone who want to do animation so they don't get like a incorrect feel compared to each other, right? Because I mean, depending on how, how you use the, you know, easing out, easing in, and, yeah, and yeah. certain yeah. timings, so, yeah, it the, can the reason get very why different feelings. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's a very good question, and we should definitely strive to provide guidance um, for what kind of transition at at what, what time to use, and um, it's definitely on the radar. I, I just don't want to steal Tobias' uh, thunder because uh, he, um, he's going to be talking about that. Um, uh, so definitely, um, you know, it's it's now absolutely, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of work to get the stuff animated. So further down the road, I hope that we have like frameworks or, or libraries that, that, that help developers to, to do uh, animations easily and provide guidelines and have patterns that are useful. But just like what we have right now, the um, interface guidelines listing common patterns, we didn't just, you know, sit down and uh, came up with it, uh, we sort of, as we were designing the applications, we identified the, the patterns that actually worked and then they ended up being in the, in the design guidelines. So yes, definitely I wish um, and hope that we're going to come up with some guidelines for these. One more question. So I would like to touch the topic of remote desktops, where all those flashy animations just don't play well with the current technologies. And uh, so what should we do? Uh, either uh, ditch VNC, which just transmit, uh, uh, transmits every frame non-incrementally if there is such a large number of change, or maybe disable all those uh, animations when there is uh, some remote desktop software running and transmitting your screen. So what's your opinion on this matter? Well, I haven't really thought about the fallback 
all that much. But yeah, I mean, there are cases where we have to tone these down, and um, you know, um, I, I'm sure that um, that that is a consideration. I just hope that, that uh, focusing on the main use case um, is going to be a priority, and that that's the that's the primary push for, for pushing animations. Of course, there are use cases like the remote screens where, where you gotta do something. So um, any of those that you proposed are viable. I haven't looked at it. Once we figure out what's the best approach there, um, we just pick one. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Jakob. <laughs> and we will move on to Tobias's talk.